For me, I'm just one of the few still alive who was present at, out there at that time and involved in one way or another. I'm grateful that, uh, that there's still a few of us around so that others can be told about the Battle of Midway. It was a turning point in World War II, a very significant time in World War II, because after the Battle of Midway, we were always in the ascendancy. Before that, we were not. To be honest with you, during the attack, I wasn't afraid. It was pending the attack, just waiting to then. Well, we knew they were coming in, and that distance between when we knew it and when they hit us was a big difference in my mental attitude. We got some notices that uh, Japanese had some transport and troops on them that if they took Midway, they would land them on Midway. We found out we were going to attack the Japanese shipping. I wasn't scheduled to fly, and a friend of mine named Butler wasn't either. And it's scary, awful scary, being a boarded ship when you have no battle station, because our battle station was our airplane. Japanese retaliated. I was on a flight deck and they took us down to the hangar deck, stuck us in the corner someplace because we couldn't have flight operations of our own. So we had 18 flight crews and these old torpedo planes had been obsolete since before the war started. So uh, when something needed a new part, they were cannibalizing parts from one plane to keep others flying. And by the time we got to the Battle of Midway, we only had 14 operable planes. When they arrived at Midway Island, they just had time to drop the fuel tanks out and be reloaded with torpedoes. Then they were sent off. The, the Battle of Midway had already begun, and we were getting snippets of information about what was happening. All of a sudden, here there comes a zero out of the clouds and blazing with his guns and we ducked down right next to the water and we got a few shots off at the Zero. We sent 14 planes out and we only got four back. The fourth one was so late that they had uh, cleared the flight deck, figuring nobody could still be in the air. And this old chief pilot uh, come back in late and his plane was shot up so bad that when they got him, him and his gunner out of it, they pushed the plane over the side. It was shot up so badly. One airplane survived and came back to Midway. When the pilot put down the, pulled the lever to let the landing gear come down, only one gear came down on the plane, and he made a one-wheel landing, cartwheeled around, and was destroyed. They were the only two men that survived. They sent out dive bombers and us three old torpedo planes, and after we got in the air, my pilot told me that, that they had instructions. They wanted that ship at all costs, but if you can bring those three torpedo planes back, that's the only three torpedo planes left in the whole Pacific fleet. We flew out there and uh, circled the ship, but most of the time out of range of the guns, but once in a while the pilot would turn in toward him to, to draw some gunfire from him, and just flew a big circle around that ship and watched the dive bombers pound the living hell out of it. We saw the smoke and, and three carriers about 10 miles apart from each other, three carriers, and they're just burning from one end to the other, and, and that's the first time that Midway had had any idea what kind of a damage we did. They gave us orders to go convoy the Yorktown because it had been hit pretty bad and it was under tow with a tug out of Midway. 
We had the general quarters in the morning and we got up on deck just in time to see these torpedoes coming from the Japanese sub. A couple hit uh, Yorktown and uh, one or two hit uh, Hammond. The captain said, abandon ship. So everyone hit the drink, started to jumping overboard and sliding down the ropes. I slid down the ropes and they coming so fast, I got about halfway. I just dropped in the water. The Hammond had all the open doors with work party aboard the carrier and it sunk, believe it or not, in about three minutes. They carry something like 300 people on there. I think they saved about 70. We was looking there and they were hollering help and I couldn't do a day going to think about it. And that really got to me. The morning after that, well, the Yorktown was leaning more. The deck was about touching the water and, and they was expecting it to sink. And they said, well, all Yorktown people come up top deck and uh, take a look at your ship for the last time. Everybody put up their dress flags and, and we was on deck and all saluted as it turned over and this sunk. And I looked, stood there at attention and cried because that was my home. Just thinking of our, all the people that I knew that were going to be in that battle and the people were going to be lost and that I'd never seen again, that I, that I would never see again. With all the men that were around me and on, on my ship, I didn't see one person who showed any fear or uh, un uneasiness about the battle. The thing that I think about yet to this day is uh, especially one man in the squadron, one of the rear gunners, was a second class radioman and he had a, a new child, a new baby boy, born here in San Diego after we left. And he was always talking about when we would get home so he could see that boy. And he was killed at the Battle of Midway and I I always dwell on that when I think of the Battle of Midway. Very, very down mentally when we found we lost the squadron, but rather related, on the other hand, when we found out the extent of damage we did to the Japanese fleet. Well, I think it's wonderful that we were, uh, that we're honored from year to year, because I think we had a great part in the war. A whole group of us went uh, over one day and, and spoke to all the children and uh, told them our story and everything. They seemed real interested in it. And uh, a couple of days later, I was walking down the street and here comes this old boy, he's about 10 years old. And, and put his arm around me. He says, well, I want to thank you for being there and telling us the story, and we're proud of you. And that was really the first thank you I got out of that whole deal. And I was really glad to get it. <laughs>